Good morning, Torb John. Can you hear me? Good morning. I can hear you. Great. Great to have you. So uh, uh, let me just introduce, uh, uh, you know, the webinar uh, before we start, and then I'll uh, hand it over to you. So we have about uh, 26 people who are right now signed in, and we also have uh, Professor Eric Reinflisch, who's uh, uh, joining us. My name is um, Vishal Sasteva. I'm the director of the Illinois Maker Lab. And we have, um, and I believe Dr. Ryan Flesh is also on the call. He should be on in a second. And we are um, doing this webinar as part of the Coursera specialization on uh, 3D printing. Um, now, mo I expect most of the viewers today will be in the course already, but those of you who are not can um, learn more about us. Just search for us with 3D Printing Profs, and uh, you will find information about us on our website. And, of course, you see the Facebook page. You can search for us, um, uh, you know, just with uh, the keyword 3D Printing Profs. So this specialization on Coursera has been live for about uh, eight months now, and we have about 20,000 uh, enrollments across the first three courses. Uh, the first course on 3D Printing Revolution offered by uh, Professor Einflisch, and the second course on 3D Printing Applications, uh, which I lead, and then the third course on software, which uh, Jeff Smith from Autodesk uh, leads as uh, the instructor. So Autodesk is our partner in the project. The fourth course in, this, uh, in the series is uh, led by uh, Ultimaker. Uh, that is uh, um, the director of community for North America is, is leading that uh, course for us. And that is uh, to be launched in about a month or so. So, and, and then, you know, that'll be followed by our uh, capstone in the series, um, which will be sort of the end of the specialization. Um, and, you know, the content itself, of course, is free to view, but if you want certificates, you can sign up for the webinar as well. And we've been doing uh, these webinars, uh, you know, across the last few months. And today we are happy to introduce uh, Torb John on, um, and, you know, have him tell us about uh, his project where, um, you know, he, he, is, he has been working, you know, in his master's thesis as well on exploring, um, you know, the open source platform around, uh, you know, his work was around the RepTrap project. Uh, but this is sort of an extension where, you know, he's uh, putting out a project where all of us can get involved in creating uh, a printer without essentially limits of a traditional frame. Um, so thank you, uh, Torb John, for uh, joining us. I'll, uh, you know, perhaps uh, let you introduce yourself first and tell us a little bit before we talk about uh, your project. And I will see if I can, uh, I know Professor Ryan Flesh is also on the call. I'm just trying to get him uh, 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 as a, panelist in the call. But while I do that, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, so my name is uh, Torbjörn Ludvigsen. I have, uh, I have a degree in uh, engineering physics, master's degree. And my interest in, in RepRap 3D printing um, came to me when I, I'm, uh, when I was studying and I had some time over, like the first and the second years. Uh, and I continued by by making reference for friends. Okay. That was like my my start with 3D printing. Thanks. So uh, tell us about your uh, uh, work in your uh, master's thesis first. What what did you do? I mean, what got you into the RepRap project to start with? Uh, to start with, there were there were not many other printers at all because, yeah. The RepRap community was dominant among the cheap printers. Okay. So I just bought uh, some of the early kits and I began reading about it and I read Adrian Boyer's uh, text and and his uh, ports. Uh, 
What was your question? Uh, I mean, in terms, if you could share more details about what you did for your uh, master's thesis. Yeah, the master's thesis. Um, that was for open source ecology. I don't know if you know Martin Jakubowski. No. He he wanted to have uh, to host rep rep assembly workshops, and I wanted to help him in some way. And I okay. realized that most assembly workshop hosts don't really love doing the software part, and the software side of uh, rep rep 3D printing was really fragmented. So I created a a live operating system that was pre-configured for, okay. for such use. Nice, okay. Uh, so you okay. Can, yeah. uh, tell us um, um, more about your, uh, you know, the hang, hang printer project and how did you get started with that? Yeah, um, it really started when I, when I was teaching my friends to build uh, rep wraps. And uh, the whole process of making the frame, we were building mandals at the time. Nice. They have threaded rods, lots of threaded rods in okay. the frame. And we had to align it, and it took lots of time, lots of effort. And then one of my friends uh, was uh, irritated, and he said, can we just suspend the hot end in the ceiling and be done with it? I go to the next step. And so I thought about it for a long time, and it made sense mechanically, so I started sketching. Nice. Okay. So, uh, tell us. I mean, take us through the development cycle for the project, and you know, tell us more about the project itself. Um, the development cycle started from the from bare scratch, from 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 the beginning. I viewed the the Delta printers and the RepRap Morgan and RepRap Simpson, uh, and I realized that I can trade away some. Uh, some uh, complexity in the mechanics by adding more complex software instead. That was the first realization. And, and then I tested one concept uh, in an isolated fashion and documented that and went ahead slowly. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to uh, perhaps uh, show some uh, um, images of the um, the project itself so let me try and uh, share some of that on the screen or if you have anything open on your screen that you want to share we can do that too there is a share screen uh, option available at the bottom of the zoom window okay uh, let's share the clone wars picture uh, like that share screen so, oh, can people see the the uh, green dots? It's visible. Not right now. It's still coming up. Uh, I think the screen is still trying to render it. Okay. No, it's. Can you just try again? It's not showing up. Okay. Let's stop share. You share. Oh, it froze. Yeah, I think it froze. Oh, there it is. Now, now we can see it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, now it's. I think it switched off. Perhaps you can try. <laughs> try the share again. I'll try it again. Share screen. Yeah. Now it works. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So you see the network? Yes, we can. So tell us about it. Uh, this is a network where the green dots represent people. And uh, the lines between the dots, they signify that one person gave another person parts for a 3D printer. Oh, okay. So all the green dots are Spanish people uh, participating in a project called the Clone Wars. Okay. Uh, and this uh, network, it uh, told me that uh, production machinery has actually spread in a viral manner for the first time. Nice. Like this, uh, at least digital production machinery has. And uh, also this uh, realization, I kind of could sense it when I made reps for my friends, but I didn't know that others did this and that the chains of, of transfer were so long. Nice. So this was all uh, parts for uh, the reprap uh, machines? Yes. 
Nice. Okay. And over what time period was this mapped out? I think this was two two years. Okay. 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 Could you? Um, uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, all all the green dots here had to had to register themselves in the database online. Okay. So there will always be someone who didn't do that, but these are nice data anyway. Nice. Okay. So I guess this was your um, motivation for you know exploring the open source ecology uh, a little bit more. Could you show us what you did for the uh, uh, Hank Printer project? Perhaps some images from your website itself. Yes, I'll see what I can find. Hmm. Let's see. Do I have to press the stop share? No, maybe not. Uh, uh, I mean, if you can just load in the browser itself, that'll work. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. It kind of blocks all the other windows. Yeah, you can do a stop share and then start again once you open up the. Um, yeah, I'll do okay. that. Sorry for sorry for the wait. No, 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 no problem. Now, um, I'm still trying to get Professor Eric Reinfresh as a panelist, but it you know the Zoom software doesn't seem to be allowing me to do that. So he's here in the uh, audience with all of us, but I can't seem to get him on uh, camera today. Okay, do you want the, the pictures of the hand printer? Yeah, and you know, so just uh, anything that'll help us uh, understand the scope and you know uh, how the project really works. Okay. Let's see if I can find the share screen button again. Share screen. And. Uh, Hmm. I'm trying to show you show you a render of the geometry. Do, do you see the yellow CAD model now? Yes, I do. Yeah. This was the this was the absolute first sketch and the basic idea. Okay. Suspending a, a hot end in the ceiling with a vertical line. Okay. Then adding three horizontal lines to okay. to moving the x y plane, and I calculated how long I how big. The print volume I got if I, if I didn't compensate the pendulum pendulum motion. Okay. Uh, I mean, if I just considered the vertical line to be a z-axis, then I would get three three centimeters of uh, print diameter. If I had zero point four millimeter layers, so I decided to not do that. Okay. Yeah, I've also put a link to the video of the print in action um, in the chat, and you know, recommend for I mean, all the viewers can also click on the link and have a look. We can even try and uh, see if it'll show once. If you play it on your screen, it might uh, work for others as well. Let's try that. Okay, so this is the printer as it looks now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Okay.
this is just to show it it actually works nice okay and what is uh, i remember seeing some images i guess you can show them uh, on the scale that you've been able to achieve with this uh, i can show that uh, I think I broke a world world uh, record nice. two weeks ago. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> doing a four point six meter tall print. So I'm now showing you my blog. Okay. Yeah, we uh, we did put a link to your blog in the um, uh, in the webinar uh, registration screen. I will put it here again. This this is the print when it was three and a half meters. Wow, that looks a lot bigger than three and a half meters. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it it would be easier to see the scale if I had a person beside it. But when you put the camera low, you can kind of make things look tall. Okay. But it's uh, definitely bigger than people. In this picture, you can see me. Yeah. Uh, standing right. beside it. Now the scale looks right. Okay. So yeah, we have some uh, you know questions coming up. We can answer them. Uh, are you able to see the chat as well? Uh, I was before. So it's I right should be able to, to see the, it again. It's right next to yes. the share screen button. So you know, uh, Jay is asking about what layer thickness you kept for this print. Oh, the layer thickness was uh, zero point eight millimeters. Okay. What nozzle size did you use for this? 1.2 millimeters. 1.2 millimeters, yeah. That's mostly because it's it's the biggest one that's commercially available. Otherwise, I would use something even bigger. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Erica is asking, where did the printing take place? Uh, this took place in northern uh, Sweden, in Umeå University. Oh, okay. In a staircase near the design institution. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so Anirudh is saying, how much time did all of this take? Uh, all of it, including the modeling, took four weeks, and okay. the print time was three weeks. Three weeks, wow. Okay, so I, I'm guessing, I mean, is this, is this not going on continuously, right? So it's, uh, are you able to stop the print and then continue? Yeah, I power it down uh, when I sleep. Oh, okay, okay. And also to be able to make repairs and stuff. Because the parts they, they wear down, and um, you know Alejandro is Alejandre rather is asking what material was used. Uh, for this project, I used the PLA that was uh, um, blended with wood dust. Okay. To get the wood-like or paper-like surface, okay. and also to have the nice color. Uh, so let's give us a sort of a, sh a short technical overview of how this all comes together. Uh, you know, I see some com questions coming up. So take us through, um, you know, how this, uh, how somebody else can try it. I know there are instructions and, you know, you put it up uh, as an open source project, but give us a, you know, five minute overview of how it works. Okay, so it, uh, it basically winds and unwinds uh, fishing line. Uh, really unflexible uh, fishing line dilemma uh, in four di uh, directions. Uh, and uh, yes, the, the motion control is just controlling the spools with the fishing line on it. Uh, the fishing lines are mounted such that uh, there are pairs of fishing lines going to the lower anchor points. And then anchor points are just stationary lamp hooks that I drill into the wall and into the ceiling. So I have uh, parallel lines going to the lower anchor points uh, and they are par parallel to keep it from rotating. And I also have three uh, pairs of lines going to the ceiling so that uh, I keep the printer in the plane all of the time. I guess all of this is really hard to, to visualize just from my description. Let's see if I have any. It's it's so hard to depict this printer because it's so big. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing one video which was a far shot showing the printer in actions. Uh, maybe that will be a good idea to show. Uh, let's see. 
a fire shot. Yeah. Mm. Oh, was it the campaign video, maybe? Maybe the campaign video, yeah. That's the, that's the nicest one. Let's see. I yeah, this one, yeah. Yeah, and you know while this is uh, playing, I can I guess uh, also provide uh, links to the. Um, so this is your campaign for. Uh, uh, why don't you tell us about the uh, campaign as well? Uh, yeah, uh, the campaign is basically uh, to let people give me money in some way because. <laughs> people started emailing me and asking for ways to support the project and I realized I needed some infrastructure. Okay. So I'm trying to separate my, my personal economy from the project's economy. Okay. Uh, so there's a bounty source page now and a bounty source team. And the team has about a thousand dollars of budget right now. And some people uh, give it money each month about three or four hundred dollars uh, and if and if I see someone doing uh, technical contributions to the, to the project uh, doing pull requests to github and such then I will include them in the project so that they also can use those that money to okay. buy hand print the part and, and such right. uh, can you play the video for a bit this one the uh, to see the operation, yeah. okay. And while while that plays, there are some questions on the chat. You know, uh, Erica asking about how do you feed filament into the machine with that ladder. Uh, and um, yeah, the ladder is just uh, for repairing it. The material uh, comes down from the from above the printer. Let's see if I can mute this. Oh, nice. The material comes down the center of the printer, and it's uh, just um, an FDM filament and an FDM extruder and hot end, like most other uh, repairs have. So, and the large print actually had a spool of filament uh, eight meters up. Wow. All so the time. So Anirudh uh, has a question on how do you control the vibrations of the system? Um, I control vibrations mainly by calibrating it right and uh, not having any springs anywhere in the motion system. So everything is really non-flexible. Uh, so uh, directly if, if uh, I have uh, miscalibrated it, I will see lines get slack and I will redo the calibration. Nice, okay. Uh, so some questions on uh, bed leveling. How do you adjust for that from David? Uh, uh, bed leveling is a bit easier since the layer thickness is uh, so high compared to, to other repair printers. So I do that uh, very manually. I just run the printer to the zero point and um, then I run it to all corners, uh, inspecting visually that uh, the first li layer will, will be okay. And if, if I have a skewed uh, base plate, then I just put something under it, like a stack of paper or something in one corner. Okay. All right. Uh, Shubham has a question on how do you support the printer? Is it with some kind of uh, a rope, elastic rope or something else? from the ceiling or, you know, wherever you are uh, hanging. Yeah. yeah, the lines are um, finishing lines, but they're really non-flexible. You can see, uh, yeah, it's finishing lines, basically supporting the printer. And in the ceiling, you have lamp hooks. Okay, lamp hooks, nice. Uh, Anwar has a question on what's the lowest resolution you are able to achieve with this kind of uh, setup? If I calibrate it really well, then I will get better than than one millimeter. Wow. Okay. Uh, at least at least in precision and close to 
close to the zero point. But the, the farther you get away from zero, uh, the less accuracy you have. So I will have uh, uh, precision will always be good, but accuracy won't be good if you go far away from where we go. Okay. So tell us about, uh, I mean, what at what stage are you in terms of the software and the hardware? And I mean, first, I guess the question is, uh, uh, does this require custom software to operate or is it, uh, you know, or, or it doesn't? It uses a slightly modified version of Marlin. Okay. Um, the open source uh, wrap-up firmware. So it's, uh, you need to use uh, the hang printer version of Marlin. Okay. For, for the hang printer. Right. Okay. And I know you, you've sort of uh, created this in, you know, with a view that anybody can use it anywhere and use some normal uh, structure within a building or even within their house or a garage and sort of build around it. So, uh, you know, Anwar has one question, what's the max uh, X, X and Y, uh, not the Z, the X and Y on this that you can achieve? The maximum? On the X uh, and Y, yeah. I'm not really sure. It depends. Uh, right now it's limited by the spools because they have, they have uh, a low radius. Okay. So, so we, uh, the line will build up on the spool and increase the radius. And I try to compensate for that in software, but that compensation isn't perfect. So I guess if you move more than maybe six or seven meters, you will get really bad accuracy. Okay. I have never tried to print or move wider than maybe one and a half meters. One and a half meters on the, okay, okay. And uh, yeah, you will get into difficulty with having a uh, plain build plate as well. Okay. Uh, so Alexandre has a suggestion that have you tried anything other than fishing lines? He suggests Kevlar might be stiffer than uh, the nylon uh, for the print. For the uh, uh, I actually haven't noticed any flex in the fishing lines uh, as of yet, so okay. I haven't thought about that, but. Uh, the main source of vibration and flex is in the black bottom plate itself. Okay. So I'll focus more on that because it carries the weight of all the motors. Oh, okay. How heavy is the whole uh, setup? Uh, the moving part is two kilograms. Two kilograms. Okay. So, um, so Rishabh has another question on the effect on precision when you use it for large areas. So does it get less precise as you increase the scale or no? Uh, it will get less accurate. Less so accurate. you want, if you, if you try to print something that has, uh, uh, or let, it, let me say that you won't get the tolerances you want, but uh, you will have precision because precision only means repeatability. So the second layer will get exactly on top of the first layer but both layers will be too wide or too short or they won't have the tolerance you want. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Sorna has a question on packaging material. I'm not sure that's clear. Sorna, could you clarify again? Uh, Alexandra is asking, is there a counterweight you needed to stabilize the print head? Uh, no, there's no counterweight anywhere in the system. Oh, okay. Uh, Rishabh is asking about, do you have any feedback mechanism on it? I'm not sure if that's clear, uh, to reduce tolerance. Okay, so some feedback mechanism uh, with the software to reduce the tolerance. No, the current version only go, uh, it uses no, no closed loop feedback. No closed loop feedback, okay, nice. Um, yes, yeah, so we are, uh, I mean, I've asked Sorna to clarify. She, her question was, what are the packaging materials that can be used? I'm not sure that uh, like okay. features like Teflon or nylon. Oh, for are you talking? So now are you mentioning uh, um, about the string or the feedstock? Um, printing with Teflon or nylon? Okay, so I think she's saying, is it possible to use uh, you know other materials like Teflon or nylon instead of PLA? Uh, yes, nylon is possible. Teflon is not. Okay. 
uh, you can use uh, any commercially available filament for uh, FDM 3D printing. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, so, you know, um, tell us how uh, people can uh, find more information and perhaps get involved or try it out themselves. Uh, yes, uh, you can join uh, the Facebook page. Some people have actually made a Facebook group for it, a public Facebook group. And you can also uh, go to RepRap forums. Let's see can just copy this in the chat. Yeah, perhaps just copy all the links you want to share, just copy them in the chat. Yeah, that's easiest. Like that, yeah, big block. Yeah, so all the links are there. I think the first link is the forum on the RepRap website where you can, um, you know, first just yeah. say and get involved. Um, yeah, I want the technical discussion to be there. Okay. Um, so for uh, I guess all the uh, the the software itself is on uh, GitHub. I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. So that's the second link. Okay. You will find all the the uh, 3D models, all the the CAD file, design files, and also the firmware in the okay. same place. Nice, nice. And also a few instructions and further links and so okay. so on. So what are your, uh, you know, plans for this over the next, let's say, year or so? What is your goal? Uh, there are two, two parallel processes. First one is getting as many as possible to build one and making it work and okay. fixing the small, small things that they want to change on version two, the current version. And uh, then I also, I'm also developing version three. Okay. Uh, but that's that's only sketches right now. So most of the time, I'm I'm putting into supporting people who wants to build it, and trying to connect the people who build it so that we can have a community and support each other. Nice. That is that is amazing. So we have uh, in a couple more questions. Alejandre is asking, how tall do you think this could go? The you know on the z-axis. The maximum height. Yeah. Oh, that's really hard to imagine the maximum of that. Yeah, if you have a, a very tall staircase, you can print very tall things. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Anwar is wondering if it can be used for, you know, making buildings, uh, you know, as a th 3D printer for buildings. Uh, yeah, of course, but, <laughs> but the cur current nozzle with 1.2 millimeters will, will, not will work. be very limiting. Yeah. <laughs> it will take too much time. And, uh, uh, many people ask me if I can use it for concrete. Uh, and that would require lots of more work, but it's yeah. certainly possible to use the geometry and the firmware. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, perhaps with concrete with a proper nozzle somewhere. Uh, Gautam is saying, can we uh, find out a way to use automatic bed leveling? Yeah, that's uh, as easy as just copying the code that Marlin used for auto bed leveling and adding a sensor. Okay, okay, so, so it's not, not too difficult, yeah? No, you would basically use the same setup as Delta printers use. Okay. okay. I try to alter as little as possible from the normal RepRap firmware, so you get all the things that normal printers have. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, so I guess we have the, you know shared uh, the ways in which people can get involved. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the learners? I know uh, the learners. You know we recommend you keep. Um, if you have more questions, please keep posting in the chat. Um, but you know, over to you if you want to share any other thing about the project. Hmm. Uh, right now, uh, I have lots of people asking me to make kits. So uh, I could ask you if you want to make kits, uh, you can you can contact me or you can build a printer first. That's the most important, and then you can show me that you can build these printers, uh, and tell me that you want to make kids and I will send the requests on to you guys, I think, because me myself, I have a day job and I can't, I can't be a kid maker <laughs> at the same time. I can imagine, yeah, making these kids. So, I mean, so then you are open to other people using, you know, the firm, the, you know, the project and uh, making, you know, some commercial kits out of it as well. 
Yes, one of the project's goals is helping others make money. Okay. Uh, so I'm very open to that, no problem. Nice, okay. So I guess the, uh, when Pierce has question on, can you combine two or three such printers to create uh, intersecting geometries? Uh, that's very hard because the lines will very easily touch. The fishing, I mean, the support lines, right? So, yeah. Yeah, that may be a concern. Uh, so what is the uh, best way to sort of contact you? Is it through the forums or through your blog, if you could share that? Uh, my blog uh, mostly has has links and such, so you can you can contact me directly through the blog. Okay. But, but the blog has a, a collection of contacts. But I really prefer all the technical discussion to go on on the forums where people can search it and make use of it for years. Okay. Uh, so I won't answer technical questions in private emails ever. Okay. I will only ask you to go to the forums and ask the same question. Okay. Okay. So, and we did, um, you know, we shared the link to your uh, blog. If you can share that once again in the chat. So it looks uh, like you have Alexandre willing to join the project to make kits already. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Try to make the, to make the, build the printer. Assemble one, make it work, and show me that okay. you can make it work. Okay, that that sounds great. So, uh, Torjun, thanks a lot for you know sharing your uh, project with all of us. So this video, I mean, I know many people have signed in through our uh, Facebook page as well, so it's also streaming live there. So I expect yeah. people will have some uh, you know conversation going on on our Facebook page. This video itself will be recorded and placed online on our YouTube channel. So you can uh, find, uh, I mean, those of you who are not in our course uh, can uh, find us um, on 3dprintingprofs.com uh, or if you just search for us on Twitter, Facebook, um, you will find us. And uh, so Shuvam is saying, uh, the links were sent to panelists instead of uh, to everybody. Okay, so let me let me uh, copy paste those again. Sorry about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Can see that. Okay, let I can post it for everyone. Oh, then it's going to copy. Uh, let me copy it again. So Erica is uh, actually, so Erica, which university do you work in? Plymouth State University in New Hampshire, okay. Uh, Anirudh, the fourth course on hardware is, you know, sort of going through some uh, final uh, uh, finishing touches and we'll announce soon on uh, Coursera about the launch date. Uh, so I have uh, copied uh, the links that Torp John had given. So it has all the links I think that can help you get started. And he also, let me check if, uh, uh, no, his blog link also got shared only to panelists. I'm sharing that with uh, everyone. Yeah, thanks. So uh, with that, we'll, um, you know, thank you, Torb John, again, formally, and we will post the videos for this on our um, YouTube channel and also inside our course. So those of you who are not in the course can also, you know, try out our course on Coursera. So if you're on Coursera, just search for 3D printing and you will find us. And we hope to see you again in one of our future webinars. And um, Thank you all for uh, joining and thank you, Torbja. Thank you.